The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the November 5th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. And if you can't dial in, well, we've got you covered there, too. Let those fingers do the walking. Go ahead and send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside that subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question, of course, in our Tiger's Den. Well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. All the U.S. indices trade to the upside. We'll go figure out what that means here shortly. But the Dow's up nearly 200 points, a half a percent. The S&P about 20, about four tenths of a percent. NASDAQ is up uh, two tenths or 34. Russell's up one to three tenths, 32. Semis are up one percent, 35 points. Tranny's up four tenths of a percent, 73 points there. You've got the XAU up one and six tenths percent. Gold is up one and two tenths percent. Silver's up eight tenths or 19 pennies. Lights recruit trading right up into resistance at uh, 81.30. It's up 249. Leading the charge dollar wise, the upside booking holdings up 6%, 161 bucks. Mercado Libre 83, Amazon 71, Snaptix up 31, Bill.com is up 32. To the downside is Moderna leading the charge off 70 bucks, 25%. Bionatech down 22%, 60 bucks. Regenerate off 39, Novavax down 31, Peloton down 29. So there's certainly plenty to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. And uh, no question yet interesting must be friday uh so no questions here in the tiger's den or by uh, email so let's just go take a look at uh, what we're going to take a look at let's go begin by looking at the general markets as we take a look at the uh equity future contracts out here what do we have we're up at new highs out here for the dow for the es for the nq for the russell 2000 and really the question is what does that mean so let me say what does this mean here first chart we're actually going to look at is the DAX. And we're going to pay attention to the DAX because you're going to pay attention to the DAX come Sunday evening into the early morning hours on Monday just to try to get a feel. So the DAX and the NASDAQ composite are very correlated to each other, typically. And that correlation exists as we speak right now. In the case of the DAX, yesterday was the bar following bar number nine of a TD nine count. That threshold level that if price were to close above today was tested and rejected. So it still has a valid topping signal. And that level that it would need to close above is 1606479. That's the high from yesterday. So what we have right now is still a valid topping pattern inside of the DAX. And we put that together with the NASDAQ out here, the NASDAQ composite, NDX 100. In this case, we'll take a look at the NQ. You'll, maybe you'll try to understand, maybe you will understand where it is that I'm going. So and where I'm going with this is that we do have potential tops out here inside of the market. But the first signal will likely come, come Sunday evening out here uh, and if you do see price close uh, trading above 16064 of course it'll be the close but trading above it says Ooh, maybe this is going to break out and if that's the case then the likely outcome is no short-term top inside the u.s markets and in fact instead what we would anticipate is that the u.s markets would be making their consolidation measured moves with price targets inside the nq as an example at 16928 
We're not willing to make that call. We do believe over time that's where price is going. But as I switch over, give me a moment here to get the uh, screen set up for that. We'll go take a look at the four equity future contracts. Once I get that up on our screen here, what we're going to see is both the ES and the NQ are the ones that are going to form bar number eight today. Now, you need to have bar number nine complete. That means on Monday, and that can be a higher high. But again, we're trying to use the as one of our gauges, the DAX, which have a, has a valid TD9 top. We know that resistance held because we saw how price traded today. And now you can see you've got the ES mini in the upper left, the NQ in the upper right. Today will become bar number eight, unless we see it close below bar number four. That's not likely to happen out here. Now, you still have to get a bar number nine to complete. And that means that come Monday, uh, the close of the NQ must, or the close of the ES must be above 46.2150. In the case of the NQ, the uh, close on Monday will need to be above 15, 959, 25. If we get that, then you're going to have a valid TD9 count top. The question will be, will the high be on bar number eight, Monday's bar, or Tuesday's bar? So that's what we want to pay attention to and watch. Now, if we do get that pattern, what we would expect, what we would anticipate, we'd expect the ES Mini to pull back to test its oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 46.19, so you have to use that as a guideline as to where price would pull back to. If we take a look at the NQ, where price would pull back to or should pull back to would be its oscillator and change line, and that's at 15.919. Now, as we take a look at the Dow, that's your lower left panel out here. It is only in bar number seven, so it needs an extra day in order to complete its topping signal. Of course, there are A to B equals CD structures that are in place out here and any one of these instruments could generate a bearish reversal candle to confirm a sell the d point so i don't know in the case of the dow if we're just going to have to wait to get that td9 count and that bar number eight will not form until monday out there which means it's monday through wednesday the russell 2000 it's a long ways away from uh, well it's, it's four bars away from being able to possibly generate a td9 count so i think the russell may take its cue from the other instruments so right now the DAX is giving us a signal that his TD9 count top is held. We know about a correlation that exists. I probably can show you that correlation here. Give me a moment. This will be between the big guy. That is the uh, NASDAQ composite itself. So here, this is the correlation chart. The top portion being the DAX, the bottom portion representing the correlation between the DAX and the NASDAQ composite. And all those lines, a 10-day average, all those lines above zero tell you about the directional correlation between the two of them. Now, if we go take a look at the short-term time frame chart, so let's just do that just to get a feel for what the market is communicating to you and I in the short term. And here we look at the 30-minute charts. In the 30-minute charts, we can see wave number seven, a Rose momentum indicator top on the ES Mini. Prices below its uh, TAS market profile level of 46.93. I ask you, where is price headed to? And you're exactly correct. I'm sure Ruby would have said, hey, Stevie, that's easy, 46.70. If I say, where is the NQ going to? It has a Rose momentum indicator top. You're right, 16.317.75 inside of the Dow. 35,969 is its target, and 2400.40 is the target for the Russell 2000. I take that back. The Russell 2000's next target is 2421, and below that, 2400. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. 
Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. C C call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, uh, one of our denners, John in the Tiger's Den, kind enough to point out to us that if we take a look at the expansion of the last set of swing points inside the ES Mini, that expansion would be the high, it looks like, from September the 3rd at a 45.10, all the way down to the low on September, I'm sorry, on October the 1st. That's at the uh, 42.60 level. What we'll see is that the ES Mini really hit it right to the T, the 1.618 expansion area. So as price hits these expansion areas, typically they become a, uh, well, they can become a turning area. So uh, we talked about looking at the ES Mini and the NQ forming bar number eight today. That's why we're paying attention to that. Uh, we quickly, and I'll just pull up the other charts here, real uh, the, the short-term time frame charts, just so I can help our intraday traders out there. But if we do see price begin trading about 47.13, you can see I've uh, uh, put in a small A to B equals CD on the weekly time frame chart that would take us up to the 47.89 level. But we are at a, a normal natural resistance area. The uh, again the DAX holding that TD9 count. I think that was an important piece of information. And the bar eights that are forming inside the ES and the NQ. Now, real quickly, back to those short-term time frame charts here, just so that I make sure that you guys have that uh, data. So the NQ right now, it's got the Rhodes Mintum indicator signal. When you close below the bottom, in this case here, was a bullish structured 30-minute profile, pretty much signals you're going to go back and test support, the breakout area. So another area of support. And that's at the 16, 317, 75 level. If you're asking me where are the buy the dipsters, that's where they're at. They're not here right now at 16.354. They're patiently waiting for 16.317. They also know that if we see a close below 16.317, we're very likely to go to the next breakout area, and that would be 16.157. 
at this stage here, uh, as strong as the markets have been, just anticipate that that level will hold. Now, in the case of the ES Mini, it is right now in its 30-minute session, which there's 10 more minutes to it, trading below the bottom of its profile. Two consecutive closes, but certainly one consecutive close says, okay, maybe time to move lower. That would be targeting the 4670 area. Inside the Dow, prices below the, I don't actually have a, uh, I probably have a sell the D point. Yeah, I can see a sell the D point pattern here. Price is below the bottom of its profile, below its oscillator and change line. Uh, and that would suggest a, a run back to 35.969. Again, I'd watch the NQ first because it would be the one to get to that target level of 16.317. See what happens there. Uh, if that fails, then the Dow YM should certainly get to that 35.969 area. And the uh, Russell right now just consolidating inside that profile. So the area of support here is first at 2421, and below that would be 2400. So that's what's going on in the intraday. That's what's going on on the daily time frame. I believe we have a question that is coming. So, John, thank you for pointing that out uh, to me. That is uh, very helpful and uh, allows us to share that with the uh, listening audience. We've got a question that has come in, or one so far. And uh, but you you too can get in on the game. This one's coming from Joe. So if your name's not Joe, go ahead and send me a, a email, Steve at tfn.com, with some type of question inside the Tiger's Den. Any ping will do. So Joe wants to take a look at Zillow. So let's get the uh, Zillow charts up on my uh, screen here. We'll start with the black background charts. And uh, Joe's question is, can you please take a look at Zillow? Absolutely for an entry point, short term position. So here's what we know about Zillow this week. Is that price gap down below its daily profile, moved below its weekly profile, and is now below its monthly profile. So, Joe, you and I are going to have to find a very compelling reason, a very compelling reason, uh, to uh, take a long trade inside of Zillow. But let's go ahead and pull back its set of charts out here. Those charts, excuse me. <clears throat> so what do we have? On the daily time frame, we got nothing, not a zilch, zippo. So can't give you a buy point here uh, because we don't have any kind of a pattern. And uh, let's go take a look at the longer term, a weekly chart. What do we have here? The weekly chart says, let's look at 54.31. We're at 66.46. 54.31 is its next uh, breakout level. Below that would be 32.29. Now, what we'd like to see, Joe, is should price get to this 54.31, we'd like to be able to look back at the daily time frame chart and see some type of bottoming signal. Maybe it's a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. Maybe it is a TD9 count. Maybe it's a buy the D point. Could be any of those patterns, but we want to see some type of pattern going on there. On the monthly chart, this says, hey, be careful, beware, 40.81, 39.78 is really where this wants to get back to. It's got a nice TD9 count top. Uh, only in bar number seven on the monthly. Oh, you don't see the charts. I've been doing all that and you haven't seen charts. Oh, man, Steve-O, Steve-O, Steve-O. That is where I need that two by four. Just bop me upside the head. Here's Zillow. Let's go back. Sorry about that. I've got to repeat it. Joe asked a question. I need to show it to him. So, Joe, here's the daily time frame chart. Uh, where we're at right now, I see no signal whatsoever. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on the daily time frame now. Instead, we look to the weekly chart. We don't have a bottom pattern necessarily that's going to... Uh, Form at 54.31, but that is an area where price should find support. It's a breakout area, and as price gets down there, you want to go back to the daily time frame, see what kind of pattern might be there, and if we have a pattern, that would be a buy point. So right now, the first potential, not a, an a underscore potential, what we're looking at is about the 54.31 area. The weekly or the monthly chart says ah. The heck with that. Why don't you guys just simply look at the 4081 level? That would be the next area where we would take a look at it. Your question, though, was an entry point for a short-term position, but this all suggests that price is headed lower. So maybe your question was you wanted an entry point, but you didn't say which way you wanted to trade. Now, we're not going to trade this to the short side now. Um, I, I and I don't think you really talk about intraday trading. So here's the deal, Joe. Just uh, thanks for the question. Sit tight on Zillow. Now is not the time, or at least we're not seeing a signal that now is the time. And I hope that that helps you out and have a great weekend. Uh, John in the Tiger's Den writes in another one. Uh, so John is talking about the 2-1 flat and then down day. Uh, so right now we've got gold up... Uh, 1%. Was uh, was yesterday a 2% day, John? Is that what you were? No. Uh, maybe it was. was I, I don't know. Uh, but typically, John has found that if you see a uh, day, and I'm guessing that you're referring to yesterday was a 2% day. Um, 
Yes, okay. So what John has experienced is that as gold moves higher, when you get to the 1% level out there, the sellers are saying, uh, well, okay, or the buy. Once you get above the 1% level, you typically will go to 2%. Not that you're necessarily close to that level. And, and I guess in John's case, he's done the work, and uh, that's what we saw yesterday. So it's not unusual to have a 2% day followed up with a 1% day. Is that correct, John? I think the answer is yes there. And in essence, that in essence is what he's pointing out. We're up 1%. A little over one and six, uh, one and two tenths percent inside of Goldilocks. So what John is saying is, hey folks, in this pattern that he's identified, what you should expect on Monday, Sunday, Monday, is just really sideways movement, and then the very next day, some type of pullback. Now in this case here, the pullback that we would be looking for would be a pullback that would test 1804, the top of its daily profile. So two patterns that John has identified and shared with. So thank you very much for doing that. That is a uh, uh, very kind of you. Um, so, folks, now you know what, uh, and, and, one of the, and, and, and I'll tell you what, folks, the, uh, I, would, I, would take, uh, I would take the bet, I would take the odds in Las Vegas of John being right and that we see cold move sideways out there because we're not talking about like this is a pattern that he's learned over a period of years. We're talking decades here. And uh, so he knows exactly what he's talking about. I don't have any other requests at the moment. So we're going to a, a breakout here. Maybe uh, you'll feel like you want to call in or send me an email at steve at tfnn.com. But when we do come back from this break, let's go take a look at Goldilocks on the larger picture. And um, that's what we'll do. We'll be right back. Having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. 
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, we don't have a all green market right now. You've got the uh, Nasdaq 100 down 34, the Composites off 32, Wilshire's down just uh, slightly out there. So let's go to our next question. Now this question comes in from uh, a guy named Jack, and his question is also about a guy named Jack out there. Now, uh, and, and Jack, I'll uh, uh, say thank you for all the accolades that you wrote in here. I'm not going to read those to the uh, listening audience, but Jack's basic question is: Can I tell him why Jack Dorsey? is either right or wrong about hyperinflation. So I don't have any charts here to share with you or to show you. Um, and uh, But if you're asking me, is Jack Dorsey right or wrong with regard to hyperinflation inside the United States, the first thing, Jack, I'd have to say is, well, I don't know. I didn't see his tweet because I don't follow that stuff. And I don't know what his context was. But if I assume that his context was that he was talking about the USA and that he was talking about in the short term. And, and if that's the case, then he is wrong, as John also writes it in the Tiger's Den. And here's the reasons why he is wrong. First of all, all you have to do is go back and take a look at history. So hyperinflation, different than the type of inflation that we have now, hyperinflation is all about when the people lose faith in both the government and the currency. So all you really have to do is think back about a couple of different instances, such as you can go back and take a look at Venezuela and people lost confidence in the government and the currency. Go take a look at Turkey. Uh, when they went through hyperinflation, it was the same thing. People lost confidence in the government and the currency. Uh, you can go back uh, to uh, go back to uh, to Mexico. Right. Remember when uh, the peso and there was million dollar pesos out there. So the reason that so people lost now i'm not saying that people can't lose faith in the government here but they are not going to lose faith in the currency and why is that because this is the world reserve currency and as long as the u.s dollar remains the world reserve currency this is where people flush to this is where people move to you have the u.s markets up today jack and you have treasury bonds up today investing in treasury bonds is also investing in u.s dollars out there and that's what we see going on. If we take a look at the where confidence is across the globe right now, all we have to do is take a look at the last 44 weeks out here since the beginning of the year and take a look and see where is it that investors have confidence. It is in the U.S. markets, followed then by the uh, German market, the DAX, which is up about 17 percent, followed by the FTSE in France. And then that's about it, other than some commodities out here. So Jack Dorsey is wrong short term. Do I believe that we could have that type of hyperinflation where we lose faith in the dollar and the U.S. government? The answer is yes. But that's probably many years away, not something inside the near term future. So that's the best way that I can answer your question. Again, I don't have his full context out there. But uh, when you are the reserve currency of the world, we can see people are moving into U.S. dollars out here. Just take a look at the 30 year Treasury. Take a look at the U.S. dollar index out there. And, and that's what you'll see. So all of the st and 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 so that's that's my answer to your question. Um, and, you know, we could go back throughout history and you could prove that time and time and time and time and time again. So no other questions that I see other than one from TKC. So what beautiful timing. TKC, you are a beautiful timer out there. So let's go take a look at what that request is, which is to take a look at MRK, Merck, out here. And uh, so let's get those charts flying on the uh, black background. Let me get over to my other sets of charts so I can get those rolling for us as well. So give me just a moment here. And that is MRK. And what is the question? Your question was, you're looking for long-term entry into Merck. Okay. So we're not going to buy the, oh, I see, oh, the big pullback today. Okay, perfect. So right now we've got Merck that is pulled all the way back inside its daily profile. And right now it's sitting right at the center. So one potential area to look at TKC would be the bottom of that profile. That's at 79.80. Uh, if we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, it's hard to see. In fact, it's nearly impossible to see. But the top of the profile is where that 83.19 
bar on the right in the center panel is. So price is now below the top of the profile, and that would suggest price could move all the way back to 72 to 73. First level is 79. Next levels are 72 to 73. Another level is the top of the monthly profile, and that's at 77. So we've kind of got our range out here. It's between 72 and 77 bucks. Now, what you'd want to do as Merck is pulling back into those areas is see some kind of bottoming patterns, and preferably on the daily time frame. In this case here, uh, what we're going to get today is a confirmed roads momentum indicator signal. This suggests, uh, TKC, that price should pull back to that 79.80, but its breakout level is also in play. And that breakout level is 78.11. So you're asking me where is a long-term entry point? I would be watching that 78.11 area. What we would like to see as price gets into whether it's 78.11 or 79.80, uh, what we'd like to see is some type of short-term patterns on the, on the intraday charts, like a 30-minute chart, for example such as this one. Do we have one? No, we do not. Now is not the time. I think you need to be uh, patient out here and uh, let this thing pull back to uh, key levels of support, see if those areas hold, and then look to those short-term time frame charts to look for an entry point. Does that help you out? Does that answer your question? Is I'm, am I clear as to you know why it is that uh, uh, the charts are communicating what they are to uh, what they are communicating today on the weekly chart as well? We can also see at about the 79 area is its oscillator and change line. So that 78, 96, 79 area, you know, maybe should uh, hold inside of uh, Merck out here. So I hope that that helps you out. And uh, thanks so much for writing in. What I don't have is a uh, is another question. So it is. Oh, I take that back. We've got two. Thank you, folks. And uh, the first one coming from Eddie, and Eddie says, Steve, no one has mentioned the Pfizer news with the Tamiflu-type pill that they tested with 90% efficacy in trial service cases of COVID, got lead claim uh, it's the end of the pandemic. Of course, he sits on that board, doesn't he? You don't think he has a vested interest, do you? Really? Yeah, well, so I'm not going to go there. Uh, do you think this is a sell the news event at uh, the beginnings of a second? You know, all, all that I can say, I don't know what stock you're you're, you're looking at Pfizer. What's Pfizer? PFE, I believe, out here. Uh, first of all, that trial was done on 3,000 people. Uh, I'm trying to read up about it. Um, but uh, so your question is, is this a sell the news for, for Pfizer out here? All that I could do is just take a look at the different patterns. Because, uh, you know, Eddie, when I go back and I historically take a look at charts and we look at the patterns and what was going on in tops and bottoms, I can't hover over a candle to know what the news event might have been that was associated with that. So instead, let's just take a look at Merck and take a look at the uh, patterns, okay? And it would just simply answer it that way. We don't have to, uh, we can just be uh, objective about it. So on the daily time frame out here uh, for, this is still Merck. I thought I went to Pfizer, all right? Give me a moment. I'm going to do that off the uh, screen here just in case uh, something uh, ties it up. So now I'm back to my uh, weekly and daily chart. So you've got a uh, brand new daily chart, a brand new daily profile that is formed. So let's just take a let's just study that for a moment. Let me get rid of this A to B equals CD pattern out here. So you can see that today a brand new profile formed. And Eddie, this profile is below price. That is a bullish signal in the case of the stock for Pfizer. Uh, not that it can't pull back, but this is a bullish signal. Supply is down below, not within it, not above it. And so this suggests that Pfizer wants to move higher. It looks like today is going to be a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We'll be right back and we'll finish looking at Pfizer for Eddie and Boca. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today.
technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at um, Pfizer for Eddie and uh, Boca. Uh, right now, uh, you've got the uh, Dow's up 100, S&P is up 7. Let's go right back to the uh, Pfizer chart. So there's a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern. Prices hit the 1 to 1 level. That was at 48.41. So, Eddie, for me, the A to B equals CD pattern does not complete until we see some type of bearish reversal candle. Today's candle right now is not a bearish reversal candle. You've got a new profile that is formed below price. That is a uh, bullish signal as well. This suggests to me that Pfizer is going to go target the 49.79 area. If I take a look at its weekly profile, we're going to close back inside its weekly profile, something it has not done for a couple of months out here. This suggests a move to about the 49.39 level, kind of ties out to the A to B equals CD. All that being said, the monthly chart says I'm not doing any of that until I clear 47.39. 44. And we can see how this has acted as resistance. 47.44 is the bearish swing point that takes you all the way back to 1999. Yes, 1999. Resistance is resistance is resistance is always resistance out here. And so in the case of Pfizer, Eddie, the real key level to be watching is going to be 47.44. So price is up at some resistance areas out here. No wonder it's struggling, you know, in this general vicinity. But do I think this is a sell the news from a technical standpoint, the answer is no, I don't have any kind of a topping pattern. I don't have a topping pattern in the case of the daily chart when I take a look at what its action is today, even though it's trading lower. It gapped up. It's still higher versus yesterday. It's above a TD9 breakdown here at 46.72. That's a positive out here, and this suggests a run to 51.36. So te technically speaking, no, this is not a sell the news event. It is a knee-jerk reaction, I would say, yes. If I look at the weekly, prices above its green oscillator and change line as well. We've already covered the weekly, so that looks pretty bullish. The uh, monthly looks pretty bullish, so we're back to the 47.44 level. So I think we've done as best as we can to answer from what buyers and sellers are doing and the technical tools that you and I use to make the determination that this is not the sell the D point. This is not the end of the uh, run for uh, Pfizer out there. Of course, I could be wrong, and uh, but, uh, but that's what the chart patterns are saying. And Eddie, your second question was, is there any worry about the global flow of capital being diverted from the United States? There's none on the charts that I take a look at. And we, you might have written that question and we had already taken a look at the uh, global flow of capital. Understand this, that when it comes to the global flow of capital, what, uh, what they are interested in is large caps. They are interested in the Dow. 
And the Dow is trading at new all-time highs in all four major currencies as we speak. It's trading higher in terms of euros, yen, pounds, and dollars. And that's a market that is in a uh, breakout mode out there. So, no, it's the uh, U.S. that is where the most confidence in. It goes back to the question that Jack asked about Jack Dorsey, that where is it when things go to hell in a handbasket and they are going to overseas? Folks. I don't know what the total number of trillions are. Somebody in the den probably does of uh, U.S. denominated bonds that uh, are, you know, were, were issued by other currency marketplaces out there. Is I, I say 17 trillion. Is that the number that's out there? Maybe somebody. I, I mean, I've heard of numbers like that. As the U.S. dollar index moves higher, which it is, and here's the other BS stuff. Before Steve, you know, just shared some information with you out here. The idea that uh, printing money means that gold should go to the roof out here is is insane. Who can possibly think of that? After, since 2008, the, what's gone on inside the money supply, and if we take a look at gold and so forth, that's not how it works. It's just an asset class. Then we take a look at buyers and sellers where prices are going to get pushed up to. Look, you have to have, when you, especially when you are the world. Um, reserve currency, and you are, ha and you have um, a rising population. I don't know if we have a rising population as a result of COVID or, or not at these day, uh, this specific day out here. But in the past, we have had a rising population. Think of it like this: if you played the game of Monopoly and you kept adding participants to it, don't you think the game would be played a whole lot easier if you increased the amount of cash that was inside there? Of course. You've got to do stuff like that. You've got to think in terms of things like uh, that as well. So uh, with regard to the if you start raising interest rates, which was already been telegraphed is going to happen, that's going to put a gigantic world of hurt in markets overseas. And certainly people are not going to want to be in those bonds. They'll try to get out. They're going to be trapped like rats. Where are you going to put that money? That's investable money. That money's not going to just sit on the sidelines out there. It's got to be invested somewhere. And where's it going to go? When things start really going to hell in a handbasket, it's going to come here to the good old U.S. of A. Even though we've got our own problems here, our problems are much smaller than the economic problems that they have overseas. So, Eddie, uh, yeah, I'm not worried, you know, about the global flow of capital, at least not at this stage, not as of 147 in the afternoon on November the 5th out there. The next question coming in from... Uh from Brent de Martinez, California, and he wants to take a look at Moderna, MRNA. So let's get that up on our charts out here. Uh, that also trading uh, lower, MRNA. And Brent's question is, what levels to the downside can you identify? Okay, uh, and you have a nice weekend as well too, Brent. So in the, uh, we talked about yesterday, an A to B equals CD, or maybe the day before something, the potential of an A to B equals CD down pattern. Well, I've just got the uh, conservative pattern that's in here. And Brent, that first target is uh, 191.85. But because the retracement on that target was only a 38% retracement, more likely than not, we're looking at about the 149 level. Price is below brand new weekly profile. So this is, uh, says that, okay, maybe price heads back to the, to the bottom of the monthly profile area. And Brent, that takes us to 155. So now we're between 147 and 191 on the A to B equals CD pattern. Support at 155.36 on the monthly time frame. I think the answer is yes. We have a price target, and it's in that range. So let's just use the 155.36 level until we have additional information. As I pull over my white background chart out here, what do I see? Price right now is trading below a breakout level. The next breakout level is 200. The next breakout level below that is 173.63. Again, what we'd be looking for is some type of bullish reversal candle to confirm a buy the D point out here. On a weekly basis, what other signals do we have? 161.01. On a monthly basis, other than the uh, bottom of that profile, and that's really all we're going to look at as we speak right now. So that 155 level is the area where I would be looking at. And uh, Brent, thanks so much for writing in and always uh, calling as well. And uh, absolutely you have a, a great weekend as well and hope all is well with the uh, family hector and the fuel injectors want to take a look at qualcomm c q c o m is the uh, ticker symbol out here let's go take a look at qualcomm and the question is uh where's resistance and support also is this an a to b equals cd pattern out here so prices uh, resistance is very clear it's at 167.94, and 167.94 is the top of the monthly profile. So Qualcomm, Qualcomm has hit resistance, pure and simple. Not that it can't close above it, 
But there's your resistance level. As I take a look at the uh, daily and weekly chart here, looking for any other signals, it's only bar number seven of a uh, daily chart out here. So no top, but you have hit resistance on the weekly chart for looking for any kind of pattern, and which we are. Um, just back to a prior level of resistance, that prior swing point area. So everything looks good. Nice wide-ranging bar on the weekly basis coming to that resistance area. But you ask where is resistance, and we've got that. Now the next question is where is support? And that question is perhaps a little bit more difficult to answer because it's way down lower out here. So you're looking at 141. You're looking at 139. Um, those are the levels of support out here. So those levels don't mean anything. If you're long Qualcomm, use some type of stop in place since prices hit resistance. I'd recommend $5.14 uh, and some type of derivative higher than that as your stop. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So we got the two-minute countdown here. We're going to take a look at Marathon Digital Holdings for Susanna in uh, Canada, who would like to get back in on this instrument. So, Susanna, you've got a sell the D point pattern that is forming, or at least as of 154 in the afternoon. That's a bearish reversal candle during the A to B equals CD to the upside. So this suggests some type of pullback. Let's go see if we can figure out where 
price is likely to pull back to. So when you get a valid topping signal, such as the one that we have right now, the first target is going to be the green oscillator and change line. That's at 59.70. What I don't know is whether or not that level will hold. What I would be looking for as price would be pulling back there, Suzanne, is some type of short-term top, uh, some type of short-term bottoming signal. You know, a 30-minute chart would be good, 65-minute chart, and you know, so that's something we're going to have to look at. Monday, Tuesday. If price closed below 59.70, that tells us about a further retracement. That further retracement would take us to 54.79 or 51.40. This was a slightly bearish structured profile. Price closed above it four or five days ago. Typically, if it's a counter trend move to the downside, would find support at that 51.40 level. So that's your range of areas to be looking at. Let's uh, come back to this on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week if Marathon Digital continues to move lower out there. Next question inside the Tiger's Den, and that was, uh, I'm not sure who asked it, it doesn't matter, but the question was about Taseco Mines, I believe, TGB. And when we take a look at Taseco Mines, uh, you can see that it formed a seventh wave move top, that is letter G, that's courtesy of Basil Chapman, really courtesy of Saratoga Bob, one of our old debtors out there, because that typically identifies a top out here. Well, that top has led to nothing more than a consolidation with inside its profile. It's neither bullish nor bearish out here. It's just simply consolidating between the range of 206 and 237. So I hope that helps you out. I believe you also wanted to take a look at UNG. UNG is still in a long position and it will remain in a long position as long as price remains above the bottom of its profile. And that's at $5.34. That is the natural gas contract. As long as price remains above the bottom of that, then UNG is still in a long to sideways neutral type position. Folks, thanks so much for joining us. Stay tuned. You've got two more great hours. I'll be back with you on Monday. Have a fantastic weekend, and we'll see you again soon.